Acts chapter 1, verse number 3. Now, I want everybody to get settled down now. Ladies, uh, visitor, if you need to use the nursery, uh, it's located back there without any of these doors. Go around that way. Go out, and it's back there in the corners. Those ladies back there will be glad to help you with your, with your child. And so please do that. Everybody else, all the teenagers, everybody else, unless you absolutely have to get up, uh, just keep your seat and stay right where you is, okay, for the rest of, this, rest of the service, okay? Acts chapter 1. Verse 3, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. That word's changed in the new modern versions of the Bible. That's why you need your King James Bible and then junk in modern ones. That word infallible ain't in them, at least most of them. There's something about that word infallible that they ain't too fond of being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So Jesus Christ was seen forty days by people after he rose from the dead. Now, Romans chapter 1. Look at verse 3. Romans chapter 1, verse number 3. Romans 1, 3. Concerning his son Jesus Christ. i wait on you just a second. I still hear them pages. Sound like people, somebody's raking leaves in here. Rump 1 3. Concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power. Everybody quiet now. We need everybody quiet. Help us out. According to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. I want to preach to you on how I know he's alive. And I know for a bunch of reasons this this morning. One of them is partly the testimony that I gave you a while ago. If there were no other things and there were no answered prayers and there were no wonderful things that God had done for us just for today, I know that he's alive because of what he'd done for me when I was 18 years old. There is no humanly, scientifically, educationally way that a person can change their heart and their desires and a totally different person by themselves. Something happened to me when I was 18 years old that I have never been the same since. If you're here this morning and you do not believe the Bible, you say there's no God, you probably wouldn't be here if you thought that, but you may have your doubts, then uh, how do you explain all of us, all of these people in here? You say, well, those are just good, fine people that sing in that choir and they just don't know no different. Oh, yeah? You should have known some of them before they got in this choir. You wouldn't believe. I mean, you talk about hippies, we got some of the worst hippies in town right here in this church this morning. Except they don't look like it no more. Drugs, alcohol. There's a man that got up here in Sunday school and said that he had drank liquor for 50 years. God done something for him. Now all of that's changed. Isn't that right, Tater? Now you think about that. Here's a man over here. Stand up, our brother Danny. I don't think he'd mind telling me this. We're telling you this. Who was on any kind of drug you can think of and was saved in a state hospital in Columbia, South Carolina. And Jesus Christ done a miracle in his life and now he's a preacher and teaches teenage boys Sunday school class. Yeah. Yeah. Right over there sits his wife. Raise your hand, Kelly. Who lives with him. There's a miracle right there. <laughs> Amen. No, I'm telling you this morning, brother... If you don't believe Jesus Christ is alive, you're going to have a hard time proving your case. We know that He's alive. He lives because He lives, thank God, down in our heart. I don't know exactly what I'm going to give you this morning, but I'm glad that He's alive. I wouldn't want to be a follower of a man of a religion who the founder was dead and died and that was the end of it. If you're a Buddhist here this morning, somewhere in the world, you could find the remains of what used to be the body of Buddha. 
You're Muslim here this morning, as like people in Iraq and people in Iran, somewhere you will find the remains of the body of what used to be the body of Muhammad. But if you're here this morning, you are a Christian, you will not find one fingernail, one toenail, one of the body of Jesus Christ, neither did his flesh see corruption. It was laid in the tomb, and the third day he got up. It was declared in the Scriptures. By, in 1 Corinthians 15, 20, Paul said, But now is Christ risen from the dead. The angel preached it in Matthew 28, 5 and 6, where he told the disciples, Fear not, for behold, ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And it is declared in Acts chapter 2, verse 31, that he spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither did his flesh see corruption. And he himself testified in Revelation 1.18 when he come back to see John on the Isle of Patmos and raptured him up there when he said, I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, am alive forevermore. He is alive this morning. You know, if somebody was illustrating one time a missionary to the Muslims and he's illustrating to them and he said, fellas, let me show you the difference between Jesus and Muhammad. He said, if I was walking down the road one day and I came to a fork in the road and I needed some direction on which way I should go at that fork. And he said there was one, two men there. One man was laying dead. The other was standing there alive. Which man should I ask at the forks of the road? And they looked at him and said, why anybody with any sense knows you ask the living man. He said, one of these days, we're going to come down to the end of life's road. We're going to come to a part of the ways. I'm not going to ask a dead man to help me. I'm going to ask the living man. Muhammad is gone. He's dead. He's history. Jesus Christ is alive and well. Amen? All history revolves around him. Do you realize this morning? Somebody tell me what year it is. 1991. Where'd you get that? It's date from his year. Every time Madeline Mary O'Hare writes a check, she puts down his year on it. Every time that an atheist or a professor writes down his birthday, his birthday's dated from that man's year. Now you know B.C., like 100, 200 B.C., that stands for before Christ. And then everything past the year he was born is what you call A.D., A.D. don't mean after death. A.D. means Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. So at, at, right at the time of his birth, the calendar began. Show me one other man who's ever lived that we date our calendars by. You know, if, if Elvis was the king, I mean, you'd be a lot younger right now. You wouldn't, the only person in here wouldn't be but 13. 14, if he died in 1977. But we don't date our calendars and our birthday from Elvis' grave and, and year. We date it from the, de- or the, or the, or the birth of the Son of God. Boy, I'll tell you what. Somebody said, Thou art the life, thou empty tomb proclaims thy conquering arm. And those who put their trust in thee, no death nor hell shall harm. The best news the world has ever heard, it heard from a graveyard. You think about that. Usually we think of a graveyard as the worst place. We dread that worse than anywhere. I'd rather go in the intensive care with one of my friends than the graveyard, wouldn't you? Because if you go in the intensive care, you think maybe they'll get better and maybe you'll get to see them okay. Maybe you can spend time with them a little bit later. If you go into somebody in the hospital operating room, you've got to hope that maybe they'll get better and you can see them again. But if you go to that long, lonely graveyard, then you say, that's it, I'll never see them again. But the greatest news the world ever heard, it heard from a graveyard when the angel came out and the, and the disciples, Mary, went down there that morning and looked in that tomb and the angel said, he's not here, 
for he is risen. Oh, that's why we're here. That's why we can have youth rallies. That's why we can sing in the choir and shout and rejoice this morning is because we serve a living Savior that rose from the dead. I'm excited and I'm thrilled and I'm happy this morning that even though it's been in 1972 when the Lord saved me, that he's still, as Brady said, kicking around inside me this morning. And he's still alive. He's still well. He's still on the throne. And he's looking at all of us right now. Hallelujah. He's alive. Amen. Well, I tell you what, I heard about this little girl and that she was, they was worried about her because she had to pass through a graveyard on the way home. And every evening when she'd walk home, she'd have to pass through this cemetery. And one evening it was real dark, getting dark. And the sun was going down. And somebody said, Honey, aren't you scared to go through that dark graveyard and, and uh, pass through there? And she looked up and smiled and said, Oh no, I'm not afraid. My home is just beyond. And boy, she could walk through that graveyard and she could just see the light of her house right over there. I'm telling you, brother, because he lived one of these days, I'm going to come down and breathe my last breath. I'm going to preach my last sermon, sing my last song, go to my last service, eat my last meal, take my last nap, say my last goodbye. I'll be facing that old dark graveyard. But you know what will make it good? And you know what will make it sweet? And you know what will make it wonderful? I can look and I can say, home is just beyond. Just pass through the valley of the shadow of death. Hallelujah. Heaven's on the other side. You know how come I can go? Because he went in front of me. One time I had a dream, and I dreamed that I was trying to follow the Lord. But you know how you are in dreams. You're all mixed up, and you got everything all wrong. And it was in the tribulation. And I was here during the tribulation and Jesus was here. And he's walking through the woods like this. And there was vines growing like briars. And there was stuff like this. And I remember I was crossing the creek and trying to step on rocks. And I was trying to follow him and bushes was hitting me in the face. And I was running into briars. And I was saying, wait, Lord, wait, like this. And, and, the father, and he kept getting farther and farther away from me. And I was just... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I woke up <laughs> like that. You ever had a nightmare like that? Boy, that's the way I woke up. I mean, I, I was like that. I was like that fellow who dreamed all night. He's real hungry, you know, and, and he dreamed to eat a hundred and fifty pound marshmallow. And he woke up and his pillow was, was gone. I was like that. I was just, I was just frightened like this. I was saying, Lord, don't leave, me. Lord. Lord, Lord, like that, you know. And boy, I woke up and I thought, I'm glad it's not that way. I'm glad He's not leaving us to run through the briar patch by ourselves. Sometimes you feel like you're just fighting your way through life. And it feels like things just hitting you on every side. But He's not going to run off and leave you. No, 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 no. He's not going to run off and leave you. Boy, He's going to be right there to hold your hand and walk with you and talk with you and tell you that He's your own. You know, that's what the great thing about Him being alive this morning uh, the song says I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear uh, falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and He walks with me and He talks with me hey folks I could tell you many many Hey man, many, many, many times when nobody knew what I was going through and nobody would understand if I'd have told them that I could get down on the end up in the woods somewhere and boy, I'd just say, dear Jesus. And boy, it just felt like a cloud would get around me. I know He was there. Hallelujah. I knew He was there. Boy, I want to just stop and shout instead of preach. He's alive. He's alive. Amen. Hey, if you was here last Sunday night, boy, last Sunday night we had one of them old-fashioned shouting services. Hey, if you if you don't like screaming and hollering, you better not go to heaven. That's right. Some, they said somebody got up and walked out the other Sunday because I was going to holler at them. I hope that fella don't go to heaven. And I hope he don't go to hell. There's a whole lot noisier down there than it is in here. And it's a whole lot noisier up there than it is in here. You wait. You wait till we get to glory, brother. We get our glorified body. We're, we're going to do gainers down the streets of gold. I mean, I mean, the little boys on them football field ain't going to have nothing on us. 
I mean, boy, we're going to be like them dudes that come down the court, you know, hit one of them little trampolines, you know, turn a flip and slam it. Like, that's the way we're going to do. Except we ain't going to have, we ain't going to have no, like, uh, the, the, the Hugo the Hornet or whoever that fella is down there. And buddy, we're going to have, we're going to rejoice and shout the victory forever and ever and ever. This whole world is a bale of tears. I'll just forget my outline this one. Just talk. Listen, this whole world is a bale of tears. It's a bale of tears. There's one one problem right after another. This old world's bad. But I'm glad in the wee hours of the night and I'm glad in the early hours of the morning that he'll walk with you and talk with you and tell you that you're his own. He can be your best friend this morning. He can comfort you. He can live with you. He can go home with you. He can sleep with you. He'll talk with you in the morning. Talk with you while you're at work. That's how I'm glad he's alive this morning. You know, I was preaching down there the night. It's good to have the, the Brookshire's over here with us in the church. They're church, not having service this morning where I was in revival meeting down there this week. Boy, we had a time down there Friday night. Got real good. And some of the people went and sang. And we uh, done some things Friday night. But I was preaching down there the other night. And I got to talking about how bad the world was. And buddy, I said this world bad. And I mean, I got to talking about uh, diseases. And I said, anybody in here? I mean, I was painting a bad picture. I, before I got through, I was scared. I was scared to breathe. I preached myself scared to death. I said, anybody in here could have AIDS right now. You don't know. That's your, I mean, you don't have to be a funny boy. I mean, brother, you, you, could, you, you, can, you can have it right now. Listen, listen. did you know all you have to do to get AIDS is for somebody's get, get out of their bloodstream into your bloodstream? Hey, more ways that are happening than one, buddy. There are people that have died from AIDS that were not homosexual, that were not intravenous drug users, and were not hemophiliacs. And dead right now. You heard about the case right now. And I'm talking about with the girl that got it from the dentist, you know, and all that. And I don't know where she did or not. But there must be some kind of evidence, evidently. And it's getting worse and worse. I, and people are looking around, they're scared to breathe, man. You know, that germ can lay on, the, on that pulpit right there and be active and be alive for hours. Don't listen to that bull on TV. They tell you that there's only two ways you can get it. That's a bunch of hogwash. That is wrong. You say, you ain't a doctor. I, it don't take a doctor to be smart enough to figure out that all you got to do is get the blood in your veins or the, then your blood and your, the germ and that's it. You go pick out a tombstone. What kind of a hope have we got in this world if Jesus ain't alive? Boy, I was painting a bad picture. And I said, there's diseases floating around in here. I know people wouldn't even go eat out because they're afraid of somebody working on a salad would cut their cell. And their blood gets on the salad. And then it goes in your mouth. I can tell you, hey, I can tell you a restaurant right here in town where the boys that, that from McDowell, when McDowell High gets beat and the other team comes through the hamburger joint, they spit on the hamburger. I have eyewitness testimonies and feed them to the other team. Yeah, yeah. Saved you a little money this evening, didn't I? Hey man, it's a nasty world out there. You say, that's gross. Yeah, you better believe it is. You don't know what's going down your goozle every day of your life. You don't. Hey, you so brother anyone, I'll just quit eating. Well, that'll kill you too. You know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to trust God. And boy, I mean, I was painting a pretty picture. And I said, Satanists got in that church up there in Hendersonville. And they broke in the church. And, and they, you know, they dug up somebody's grave or something. You know, he's been on the news the last couple of weeks over in between Asheville and Hendersonville somewhere. And I said, they've done it underneath Satan. I said, there's a boy down here at Valdez not long ago. Went meeting on a man's door on Saturday night. And he said, he just escaped with these Satanists. They were getting ready to offer him as a sacrifice. And it was getting spooky in there. And I was telling about all these terrible things happening. And I'm breaking into churches and everything. And about that time, there's a little lady sitting on the front, second row. And she's about 90, ain't she? <laughs> about 90 years old, something like that. And she blurted out right in the middle of the sermon. She said, well, take it easy on us wetters. <laughs> I said, I said, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. The Lord will take care of it. I had her scared to death. Yet she had to live by herself. 
and she's telling me to lay off that old spooky stuff. But I tell you what, I sure am glad to be able to look at that old sister and say, Sister, listen, the devil's powerful, but Jesus is all powerful. The devil's strong, but he's all strong. Hey, listen, did you know there's enough demons and devils and Satanists right around this part of the country to mess up this service this morning, to put a bomb in here, to put one in my car, to shoot me when I walk out the door? It happens, folks. I'm telling you why we're here this morning. Listen, they may have power, but the one we're serving has all power, and nothing can't happen to us unless he says it can. And if he says it can, it's all right. Amen. Heard about the little girl who was standing in the art gallery. And he was standing there and this man, this real sophisticated gentleman, come in and started looking at the paintings. And there was a painting of the crucifixion. And he was standing there looking at it. And the little girl said, Sir, I know who that is. That's Jesus. He said, Is that right? She said, Yes, sir. He said, I heard, where'd you learn that? She said, In Sunday school. And she said, I know who that old mean looking man there is with that spear. That's a Roman soldier. He says, is that right? She said, yeah, I learned that in Sunday school. He said, is that right? She said, yes, sir. And she said, he's dying. And the man said, really? She said, yes, sir. He died for our sins. And the man said, really? And she said, and after that, they got him down and put him in a grave. And the man said, where'd you learn all this stuff? She said, I go to Sunday school. Well, that's good. And he turned around and walked down the hall. And he got about halfway down the hall, and the little girl said, Oh, sir! Sir! And he turned around and she said, He rose again! She didn't want him to leave without knowing that the story ends good. Hallelujah! That he came out of the grave. This morning, when we think about testimonies of Christians, We think about there's a poor widow maybe here whose son has just died. Let's see if science, education, or religion has any answers for her. When my mom came home from church December 30th to three months ago and found my dad laying in the floor who just died with a heart attack, they called me. I took the girls to eat. They called me, and I rushed over there and... Uh, Medic, the medics were, paramedics were still there and they were, wasn't doing anything. There was nothing they could do. He's gone. My mom was crying. And my, my other sister was just bawling. I didn't go to the shelves and get a science book and try to read it to her and offer her comfort. And I preached Daddy's funeral two days after that on or January 2nd. I didn't say, now, see here today, folks, we're going to study metaphysics and psychology. Ain't going to do no good. See what I'm saying? There's some things in your life that if Jesus ain't live and real, you're in trouble, buddy. You're in big trouble. You've got to have him. You've got to have him. There will come a point in your life, everybody in here, where no, no, no amount of education you have, no amount of money you have, no amount of material things you have, popular, no, I don't care what organization you belong to, they cannot help you if God Almighty Himself don't help you. There's coming that time for everybody in here. It's coming. I mean, you should well face it. Right now, you're going to come to a day when if God don't help you, you ain't going to have no help. When I think about all the things that's happened, there's too many anchored prayers. Too many comfort in times of sorrow. Too many had their needs met. Too many times I've seen impossible circumstances work out. I've been down on my knees praying for somebody and praying about a situation, and that person was in Florida, the person I was praying for, and my phone rang. I've seen the Lord pick my heart, and I've seen a Sunday school board one time, like I was over there in a little church. God just let me see that thing. What they was going to happen to until two weeks later. And there it was. Don't kiss up there this morning. Tell me he's not alive. I know he's alive. 
Somebody testified from AA, that's Alcohol Anonymous. He'd worked there for years, and he said the only thing for some time, he said the only thing that really worked in these men's lives is what he called a religious experience. We call it getting saved. What would cause Harlan Popoff to be tortured? What would cause folks to give up a beautiful Sunday? Get the kids up. We got people here drive over an hour or an hour one way to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night. What causes people to do that? I'm talking about Wednesday night. Somebody said your your Sunday morning pop congregation proves the popularity of the of the church. Your Sunday night congregation proves the popularity of the preacher. Your Wednesday night congregation proves the popularity of the Lord. And there's some truth in that. What would make people do that? I know what let's do. Let's do something different and we'll go home. Captain, come on to the piano and y'all come to the instrument. And I want kids to come up here. All their youth choir that can hear. Just get up here right quick. We're going to sing a song and then we're going to go. Because he lives. Wait. Come on. All of you get up. Come on, girl. Now you see these young people up here this morning. Because he lives, they can face tomorrow. Because he lives, they can grow up into a cruel world full of hate and war and murder and disease and death and killing and stealing and face it with confidence. Only because he lives. Only because he lives. Only because he lives. Our life is worth the living just because he lives. My little girl's here. I don't even know where they're at. Where they at? Both of them asleep? One of them. One of them's up there. She can face tomorrow because he lives. Amen? The sisters laying over that coat back. I ain't even worried about tomorrow. I tell you, they're not either, because every night I tell them, I'm there and I pray with them. Lord, be with these girls. Let them go up to know your will. And on this Easter Sunday morning, right here, while we're all here this morning, it'd be a good time for you to get your life right with God. Jesus is looking at you. He's looking at you right now, right down through the ceiling. He can see everything you've done, every place you've been. He's looking at all of you. It'd be a good time. It'd be a real good time for you to just get out of your seat, walk down here, get your life right with God. It sure would. Listen, we're going to get, we're going to let them sing a two, two of these uh, choruses. I don't think we know the words to it all of it. We'll just sing the chorus. If God Almighty's standing with your heart this morning, hey, what a better time to get your life right than Easter Sunday morning. Let's get out of your seat, come on down here, and get in on this. Let's get your heart right with the Lord. Let's all stay in this morning while they sing. Are you ready? Bye.